My friends, my fans, my pals, let's hear it for Greg Sipes. Yo, yo. Her Majesty the Queen, the one, the only, Lady Tara Strong. And I'd be remiss if I did not give a warm welcome to the biggest celebrity in the room, the one, the only, featherweight pupper champion of the world, Wingman Sipes! It's all about the peace-loving animals, y'all. He does, mama. I'm going to ask you guys one question and then just turn it over to these lovely people out here. You have both played so many iconic characters. Are there... I'm sorry, Wingman. He's thirsty, yo. Excuse me for interrupting, Wingman. I didn't realize we were at a... By the way, did you all know that Tara and Wingman are engaged? Let's hear it for the happy couple, everyone. He loves her so much. They just make out at all the whole Teen Titans Go recording sessions every Friday. We barely get work done because all they want to do is kiss, 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 kiss. It's true. We're engaged. Give me new water, please. Are there any particular characters that the two of you have played that you were big fans of growing up that when you got the gig was a huge deal for you personally as a fan? Uh, okay. Um, yes, of course. First of all, we got we've got to play so many characters on Titans. Like I was super stoked to be Jana from the Wonder Twins on Titans. Like that's really cool, right? We got to do that. You get you're like you do every cool role, Mama. What cartoon aren't you in? <laughs> the Simpsons. Really? Not yet. Not one time. Have you? No. <laughs> but Wingman's yellow. He's gonna go all asleep in her lap. He's a Zen master. One of my favorite roles is, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm really lucky, obviously, to play Beast Boy. It was my first audition ever. You were really green. It's very green. But playing Michelangelo on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Because it was my favorite cartoon growing up, you know, it got me into meditation and yoga and martial arts and skateboarding and surfing. So to be able to bring them to you all now is, is, has been really fun. So I love that. But, you know, any role we get to play is a big part of who we are, Moises. So it's, it's, it's nice to, like, honor the different parts of who we are and bring them to life and share them with you all. You know, I lied. I've got one more little one. What has it meant to you to have fans come up to you at these tables and tell you what your performance has meant to them, tough times that it's gotten them through? What were some of those early convention experiences like for you? What, what surprised you about what people were, were giving you in terms of energy from the other side of the table? Well, we were just at the USO in, in Camp Pendleton, San Diego. Does anybody know what the USO stands for? Yeah. What? Yeah, he I didn't know. I said, you, I thought it was the United States office. <laughs> but anyways, we, we went down there and Mama Tara and I read uh, books to the, the, the children of the, at the camp down there. And, it, and this is just something we love to do. It's, it's our greatest responsibility to be able to be of service and to give back to our fans. And, and it, it's always special. And there's never a time where we take it for granted. It's, it's a great responsibility and a blessing. I mean, it's why we come. We want to give back to all you guys, and we're so grateful for all your support online and watching the shows and you guys dressing as our characters and showing us love. Like, it literally means everything. When a little girl walks over to me dressed as Raven or an old dude walks over to me dressed as Raven, <laughs> like, anything goes at cons, and love is love, and it's so special to be a part of that culture, and I love it so much. I've had so many memorable moments. Uh, Last year, a girl dressed as Raven came and talked to me, and she was talking like a lot. And her mom was crying, and a lot of people cry when they meet me. But this was like <laughs> extra it's cry. True. Well, I mean, when you're in the presence of Her Majesty. <gasps> and but she was really, really crying. So I went over to her and I said, "Are you okay?" And she said that her daughter was severely autistic and hadn't spoken in five years. And when she heard I was coming, hadn't shut up. 
<laughs> well, I was like, oh, I love that so much. So thank you guys for coming to support us. It means everything to meet you and hear your stories that our characters got you through hard times. I mean, we hear that about Titans all the time. That's right. So thank you guys for showing that support. All right, this is, this is Fan Expo. It's all about the fans. Let's get, let's get first question. I see you back there. Is that, is that Sailor Moon? Uh, okay, close enough. I saw I saw the hair and I saw the I saw the outfit. Go for it. <laughs> Ooh, this could well, get controversial right real fast. Oh, I got to cover Wingman's ears. They're engaged. I don't want him to get. <laughs> don't tell him. He'll be really jealous. <laughs> well, we, we started the whole thing, the whole shipping. You know that we're responsible for that. <laughs> so now, now we have big hit songs like, it's all about my baby, yeah, it's all about Ray. And if I don't cast my baby, all I do is go cray, cray, cray. Summertime, toes in the sand. Carnival rides, baby, hand in hand. I don't know the rest of the song right now, but it's okay. I'm gonna sing it loud. It's, thank you. It's our love for each other that I feel, you know, comes through on the show. And it kind of started off just because forever, since the beginning of the original Teen Titans, we just always hit it off. And now they write it in the show that we really love each other, and we do. And in this wild dimension where she's engaged to my dog. And, <laughs> I think that answered your question. Let's see, I see, I see a kid back there waving the hand. I don't know. I don't either, bro. My man's. I don't know nothing. I wish I could remember how to do Timmy's voice. Obtuse rubber goose, green moose, java, whoops, guava juice, not java juice, I need java. I wish I had some coffee. <laughs> it doesn't really hurt. It just becomes second nature, right? Yeah. When you get a voice and a character living in your head. It's, but I miss doing that show a lot. That was a really fun show to do. Wouldn't you agree it becomes like a whole world that you get to basically enter every time you do a voice on a different show? Yeah, when people ask us about getting into voiceover, we always tell people you have to have an acting background because when we're doing the characters, we actually see everything that's happening to these characters in our minds, which is why the voice acting translates. It's not just reading. And sometimes we cry and we were physical as much as we can be in front of the microphone and we really become these characters and they become part of us. Which is why we don't like it when they recast things. <laughs> Well, can, can I ask what it's, what it's like being in the booth and doing a, a recording session where you're having to go to a lot of emotional places, you're having to dig deep, uh, you're having to... Do you to ever really dig deep, Greg? I mean, when I wrote that waffle song, I went way deep down in the syrup, yo. Way deep down in that dirty syrup. Wow. I mean, for me, I may have cried in real life when my put died. I really did. I was crying. That is not a spoiler. If you haven't played that game yet, you shouldn't be in this room. Joker died. No, I cried. It does real. happen. There are moments in some of the shows, like for instance on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when Splinter died. Did you cry? Well, he's died a lot of times. That isn't really a spoiler. <laughs> but he lives forever, eternally. It was still a pretty you know, hard moment to digest, just to contemplate your father dying. So um, those kind of things are... They definitely come to life on our shows. All, all the different ranges of emotions. But I love on Teen Titans Go how when our characters die, we really don't die, yo. Do the old Teen Titan. Let's go. I like it. And then your old guy Teen Titan, old Beast Boy. Oh me? Yeah. No, the other beast boy on the panel. I thought I'm looking at this beast boy. I'm like, go ahead, bro. <laughs> do the old guy. That's for her. <laughs> Sorry, bro. We do old beast boy. Shall I bring all my shoes? And then my guy, did you bring the bagels? I don't understand why you're Jewish when you get old. <laughs> Weird. He converted late in life, Terry. Because doesn't anybody know that I also play Kevin Levin? 
Who's Jewish? Who's Jewish? Kevin Levin. Levin. And I'm also... Ben 10 is now a Passover story. (laughs) No, but it's like Beast Boy Levin. Okay, next question. (laughs) Our our lead cheerleader right here in the front. What is... I have two questions. What is the most emotional uh, voice over did you have to do? And second, what's your least favorite voice over? Least favorite? Do you have a least favorite? (laughs) I mean, a lot of times when you're brought in to do a lot of, you know, screaming and fighting noises, is it is it those kinds of recording sessions? Those are the rough ones, yeah. Like, can I have some water? Because the dog ate mine. (laughs) (laughs) Of course, your grace. Right away, your grace. You'll make out, but you won't drink the same water. I mean, he left lipstick. (laughs) (laughs) A thousand apologies, your majesty. Uh, I, I. my, my response to that is I, the funnier the role is, the more I enjoy it. And I love all the roles I get to play, but the funnier, the more I, I just have fun. And I like that. Because life is so serious already. And I go to cartoons for healing, for inspiration, to let go, to be free, to be unchained. So the funnier the role is, the more I enjoy it. Is there anything you didn't like was the question. <laughs> It's all love with Greg. It is all love, but we get to use our words like spells, right? Is there so anything even that if we're did? asked a question, yeah. like. doesn't mean you have to answer it the way somebody else wants it. It's always up to you. Oh. So I'm all about true and useful sp- intention, true and so, useful speech. So don't say it unless it's true and useful, not just true, because there's definitely some shows that were not that fun. <laughs> But I can't talk about those. See, he just doesn't want to answer the question. <laughs> I love it. Choose your own adventure, the Greg Sipes story. Who's next? On Who's Netflix. Next? Over there. Yes. Yes, you with the, with the bow. Yes. Hello. Hi. So, um, Tara, actually, I used to work with your cousin, Shauna. So, yeah. That's cool. What did you guys do? Uh, I was in the art department. Cool. That's what's that. how, many, how many artists we got out there? Oh, I love to see that. Creativity is the greatest rebellion. <laughs> No, it is, it's all very much like that. I, I get to pull from different parts of who I am for, for all the different Beast Boys that I play. For instance, um, the new Young Justice Beast Boy on DC Universe that I play, uh, which we just got picked up for another season, which is really exciting. It's exciting because it's a new Beast Boy, and for me, it's a new dimension to play in, and yet he's very real to me, and he always will be, since I, I've been lucky enough to bring him to life for the, almost the past 20 years. The, the Young Justice Beast Boy is a definitely, definitely kind of more serious and more grounded in reality version of Beast Boy than I'm, um, I've almost ever played, except the original Teen Titans, but this one is kind of now. When I did their first Titans, that was in 2001, too. So it's a different me, it's a different world. So the Young Justice Beast Boy is very much rooted in the now, and he's like a TV star, and a, you know, he, he loves the ladies still. He's got a lot of love. Um, wait, wait but what? What ladies? I mean, if it's all about my baby. Yeah, it's all about baby. And if I don't got my baby, all I do is go cray cray. And Beast Boy on Teen Titans Go is the, the wild, unchained, like, wingman version of myself. Look at my cute cousin that just got Oh, here. my goodness. Look at that dog. Can you guys say hi, Carol? Hi, Carol. She's so cute. I mean, I don't know if you guys know, but I grew up here. It's my hometown. <laughs> Here for the local so I got girl. my family. Okay, that's all. Back to you. <laughs> Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? I, I see a I see a kid right there. All right, Spider Kid, what you got? I am an actual vegan like Beast Boy. Me yes. too. We How many vegans that. we got out there? <laughs> this this You're panel brought cheater. to you by veganism. Veganism. Well, do you know why Beast Boy is a vegan? Because he transforms to all the different animals, so he feels their pain. He feels their pain. Why else? That's about it. 
That's a pretty good reason. Yeah. Because we love animals. We love animals. Beast Boy turns into all the animals. That's why he doesn't want to eat them or hurt them because he realizes we're all one. We're all connected. So Beast Boy is very much an enlightened master guru Buddha, if you didn't know. The message, and I was lucky enough to bring that characteristic to the, the character. He was never vegan before I brought him to life. So it's a real blessing to be the first ever vegan superhero and, and, and share the message of unity and peace, love, and animals, yeah. He'll even change it, like in the script, if they say, like, burger, you'll say veggie burger, yeah. or vegan pizza, or yeah. tofu. <laughs> That's right. I don't want to, as much as we're all animals and we all, it's okay, like, I used to have a cheese drawer, you know, growing up. Wait, a Who's, what? A cheese drawer. <laughs> You know, a like cheese. in your refrigerator? Wait, 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 what? Like every kind of cheese you'd ever want, you like open a drawer, a cheese drawer, you're like, do I want cheddar, do I want the mozzarella, do I want some craft spray cheese, whatever. I don't know, like Someone a cheese. Someone needs to draw a Beast Boy with all his cheese drawers. <laughs> nah, it it's all be... about vegan cheese now. I like vegan cheese. It's so good. It's the best, and you feel good, you look good, it tastes good, and you ain't, you're not hurting animals. So it's just about a journey. It's not that easy to become vegan. It could be, but for me, it took a long time. Because of the cheese drawer? Because of the cheese drawer. <laughs> it was right here. I had to get it out of my stomach. Okay. Yeah. Trapped, in the che- <laughs> trapped in the cheese drawer, the Greg Sipe story. Right here. <laughs> it's a good title, Moises. I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm your hype man. I got I to gotta keep cranking them out. For those in the back, uh, voice actors they looked up to that influenced them, that made them want to get into voice acting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was that your influence? Terrace John. <laughs> Cue Chicago's You're the Inspiration. That's it. <laughs> I mean, I grew up with cartoons. I loved Saturday morning cartoons. I loved watching the Flintstones and the Smurfs. And Do you guys remember a show called Wait Till Your Father Gets Home? I loved that cartoon. I don't know why. Um, and I knew when I was five that I wanted to be a singer, dancer, actress, but I didn't know that I was going to primarily do animation. And my first audition was for Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty's Furry Tail Theater is proud to present The Wizard of Paws, <gasps> which I recorded in downtown Toronto. That's and, cool. Yeah. And then I did Beetlejuice with Allison Court, who I hung out with last night. It was so fun to see her and Care Bears and my pet monster, and I had a whole bunch of stuff. Um, as well as on camera before moving to Los Angeles. But I didn't know that cartoons was going to be my main thing, but it's such a blessing. We have so much fun. We just laugh all day long, and it doesn't matter what you look like. Of course, the day you like come right from a workout, they're like, oh, we forgot to tell you, Access Hollywood's shooting behind the scenes today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Glad I showered. So, <laughs> but we have, a, we have a pretty fun time. We do, and it's, it's hard to kind of pinpoint the one thing that's inspired us or inspired me to be a voice actor? I mean, obviously, June Foray and Mel Blanc, like, <laughs> those are people that you aspire and look Robin at. Williams. Yeah. For me, Robin really inspired me, like... Yeah, yes. Yeah, and, and really, like, growing up in Disney World, has anybody been to Disney World? <laughs> so my whole family, my dad would kind of just drive us there and drop us all off and let us be free. Take Since care was, of them, Mickey. Yeah, yeah, and they did, and Mickey did, and Goofy did, and, and, and my, my, my dad was also, also the most amazing pop ever, and he is, and we would always do things together, but we'd also have a lot of freedom there to explore, and, and that was really what made me really fall in love with cartoon characters, though, is the magic of Disney World. like it. Yeah. yeah it's good. Right. And I want to be the next Mickey. I'm trying. Let's hear, let's hear it. Oh, let's hear Mickey. <laughs> Here, do you want to cue in? Ha ha ha! What's up, Canada? Yo, it'd be so fun if Canada had a Disney World, does it? Oh, Mickey. <laughs> oh, Minnie, I love rolling with you. Careful, they're children here, Mickey. Just one kiss? On the cheek? Oh. What do you think? We got casted or what? The next Mickey and Minnie. Disney, you're watching. I know it. Gorsh, it got romantic in here. Raven, right there. Yeah, lipstick on your shirt. Oh, yeah. So, first, when you do a comedian and the Oh, cute stuff.
Oh, being that, okay, so she said, being that they both like books, what book am I reading right now? Um, first of all, Dear Princess Lesia, I do love to read books, and I'm so happy to meet you in Toronto. And what's Twilight reading right now? Hmm. We just read some really good books. I think Twilight's reading the new Wingman G books. <laughs> oh, yeah, my, my fiancé's on there. The dog's on there. Yeah, read a little Wingman G book. This is a book that Wingman G wrote. It, he teaches meditation and yoga, and you can come get it at his table. We're signing, and all the proceeds go to feeding homeless dogs in Venice oh, Beach. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Are you going to read this as Twilight? Is that what you're doing? When people and animals become a family together, there is harmony in the universe, or whatever. That's pretty good, Mama Ray Ray. <laughs> See, I see, yes, right here with the purple hair. Yes, yes, right there. Yep, yep. You raised your hand. It's a very aggressive schedule. <laughs> I kind of like Lady Legacies. That was kind of fun. Look at him, look! <laughs> that was fun. And the 200th episode, did you see that, where we were animated? It was so weird that we were taking selfies. So weird. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Your phone died. I didn't die yet. That we was fun. Alive. That was the first time we've seen us animated on television as yeah. ourselves, which was really fun. And did, did you all see that most recent post that I posted where the cast is the, the Teen Titans Go versions of us as, like, friends? I thought that was, that was yeah, so that cool. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. On that same note, what was it like doing the movie? Teen Titans Go to the movies. Did you guys see that movie? Did you like the scene in the end after the credits? <laughs> Can't tell you. But there's a new movie that's coming out. It's not out yet. We saw it at Comic Con San Diego like a it couple is out. weeks Isn't ago. It out? Oh. It's not out yet. Oh, okay, sorry. Teen Titans wow. Go versus Teen Titans. It's really good. It's really funny. You're going to dig it. Yes. It's not exactly Teen Titans Go to the Movies 2, but it's something you're going to love. Yes. All right, see another kid. Who wants Teen Titans Go to the Movies 2? Or, or how about this title? Teen Titans Go to Canada. <laughs> Teen Titans Go to Toronto sounds Yeah. Better. All right, we got another kid right there with a duly appointed representative, I think. Danny, yes? come sit here. Tell Danny to come. Oh. What's your message to young fans? Everything you've ever wanted, you will receive it and you'll get it in a way you never could have imagined, better than you could have imagined every time. And you just got to know what you want. And never be afraid of giving yourself everything you've ever wanted. Wow, I did not think you were going to say something that intelligent. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Tara. <laughs> dang, dang, guru. You set the bar high. Uh, Thank you, Tara. I know, but what about you? What do you have to leave for the kids? Choose kindness. Yes. See? Simple. Man, she's so much smarter than me. <laughs> now, that's beautiful. Quick, simple. Choose kindness, right? Do, do the right thing. Choose kindness will lead you to doing the right thing That's every right. time. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for loving us too. It's yeah. very sweet. Captain Marvel right here. Why did they make portals? Because we gotta get out of here sometimes. It's hard for me to not make a portal right now, right? Didn't you wanna go eat something? Somewhere? Yeah, make a portal, Mama Ray Ray. <laughs> portal. Shh. Where'd he go? That's so He's gone. good. He's literally not here anymore. Nobody saw you. He's in another dimension. I'm taking over this panel. <laughs> He's down there doing uh, yoga. Took a quick shower. Portal. Spider Gwen. Ooh, most Ooh. like. In the Teen Titans world? Super villain. Mmm. Mm. I don't like none of them fools. 
Yeah, we're I mean, not we're not really very villainous you're people. You're kind of like we? your dad. I guess so. Don't say that. <laughs> I love Kevin Michael Richardson so much. He's he, so good. He voices Trigon. He's so good. Does anybody know who Kevin Michael Richardson is? Man, legend. One of the funniest men ever to walk on planet Earth. That's true. And just a walking heart. That's true. See, poison ivy right there. Yep. Good question. She asked how long it takes to make an episode. So we record the show every Friday morning. So think of us, East Coast time. And um, we do probably two episodes and like five episodes of pickups. And we start at nine and we finish about one o'clock. But I'd say it takes about an hour and a half to do a full episode, if we have the full cast. Okay, he agrees. I'll help out. <laughs> about that. But we have a lot of fun. We take breaks and we get to play off each other. We have a really, really good time. Let's see, we got who we yes, got. We oh, right up here. What was your favorite song from the show? From the show. Favorite song from Teen Titans Go. Mm. Uh, from Teen Titans Go or, from, or that he wrote? Or that he wrote. Teen Titans Go specifically. Oh, okay. I mean, I love the songs in the movie so much. Yeah, I know. The Waffle song is really complicated. <laughs> like, the words were hard to learn. Do you guys want to sing it with us? Waffles, waffles, waffles. 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 Waffles! Waffle. See, that was hard to learn. It took months of being in the writer's room over and over. Does the waffles go before the waffles? Didn't you think Raven was best rapper in the movie? I think so. Raven is best rapper. I think, uh, I love all the songs, but I did get to write one of the songs for Mama Ray Ray. And I produced and wrote it with DJ Him. And people love that BB Ray song. Yeah. It's nice. That's one of my favorite songs. But I like Don't Fiddle With It. If it ain't broke. I said if it ain't broke. <laughs> That's right. I learned a real deep lesson in that episode, mama. That's good, honey. It's good. It's good. Right over here. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, mama. There's no scripts. <laughs> we get to ad-lib quite a bit. They let us throw in some funny stuff do, here. Do you there. have any favorite ad-libs that either made it into the movie, made it into the show? It kind of got, it kind of got stuck as a thing there where I'd go, okay, crazy, mostly to Robin. So that kind of stuck. I think that was an ad-lib. Yeah, but you also, okay, like, your whole whatever. That's, that's not like, an ad-lib. That's, that's like, con- no, but you, you, you made it what it is. Oh, I know. But you we brought were, it to life. I know. We're talking about ad-libs. I would say, Mama. <laughs> See, that, I created that was Mama. An ad-lib. Yeah, that was an ad lib, and now the whole world says Mama. <laughs> Catchy. Let's see who's next? Who's next? Who wants it the most? Who wants it the most? Oh, this Beast Boy. Waffles, Man, pie, or burritos? You're making me so hungry right now. I love vegan waffles. I love vegan pie, and I love vegan burritos. Why not all three? That's the answer, all three, bro. Por qué no los tres? Put them in like a big sandwich. We'll take it right now. We're hungry. Can you sing You Can't Take Away? Oh, Fade Away? Yeah. No, she'll get so mad. That song's for, that song's for Tara, not this Tara, the other Tara. La, 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 la. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Right here, your, your, your cosplay is terrifying me, so I feel like I should probably give you the next one. Oh, no. Do they prefer Teen Titans Go or Teen Titans? Another controversial question. We've never been asked that before, right? No. First asked. time? First time, everybody. Wow. Listen, we have so much love and nostalgia for the first one. We'd love to do season six. Would you guys like season six? 
But we also love doing Go, and I think because they kept the original cast, it's so magical, and we really love each other, and it's so much fun. So we'd be really happy doing both side by side. There's just really special things about both. I kind of look at them as two different shows. Like, Titans Go is just pure silly fun. I mean, there's an episode about having to pee in an elevator. It's not Sometimes crazy. you gotta do it. <laughs> and then... Can't hold it. The original has such incredible stories that we'd love to get back to that, too. And the cool thing is, you get... It's like knocking on the door right now. The Teen Titans season six is like, let me in. I think, so. I think someone should answer that door already. Well, they are in a, in a little way, in actually a big way, because Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans, the That's movie true. coming out has, it's just, it's like alive. It's starting to mama fest in front of our eyes. It's mama because fest. of you all. Thank you. <laughs> Save season six hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think one of my favorite terrifying clowns in the back, Ronald McDonald. Yikes. At McDonald's? <laughs> cool. Oh, that's very sweet. Greg sing, sings too, and we get to sing on shows all the time. Um, and I put together a, a song right before the elections with E.G. Daly. We sang a song called He's Impeachable. Um, you should watch it on YouTube and download it. It all goes to charity. That was pretty fun. And I've actually spoken to Cree about wanting to do um, an album with her. I think that would be so much fun. I've just been super duper busy, but singing is like my favorite thing to do, so it's definitely... Yeah, that was fun. We got to sing in character. It's always fun. What's that? No, they're not here. Thanks, you too, sweetie. Okay. And you got some masterful musician children, too. Yeah, Sammy's an amazing musician. Yeah. Who do you want to go to next, Greg? Who do you want to go? Um, 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 <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I see All of you at the same time. <laughs> I see a raven with her hand up. Raven. <laughs> Breaking news. I'm so glad she asked that. This is literally the best question you could ask this guy. Do you like smart dogs or the new Beyond? Beyond hot dogs are good. Have you had the Beyond sausages? I mean, anything vegan, you can't go wrong. And, and the more you look, the more you're going to find the one that you love the most. Like, even with vegan cheeses, they're, they're, they're really perfecting it. it. It tastes better than normal cheese, mm -hmm. and you feel better, you look better, you're not hurting animals, you're not hurting your body and the environment. But uh, the hot dog, the hot dog, I don't know, I, I really tend to steer towards non-processed anything at this point. So, like, I love making my own superfood salads like kale salads with spirulina and really good olive oil and um, cayenne pepper and you massage it with lemon and some uh, garlic and then it's like bam that's what you want with some nutritional yeast which gives it like a cheesy flavor and then you're like I don't want no hot dog of any kind I mean I like them but if you're gonna have a hot dog get a vegan hot dog yeah I like the smart dogs those are good I know they're good with I the a Keep little follow-up to that, Greg, have you ever entertained the idea of doing like a vegan cooking show? Yeah, yeah, I actually have, I've put out a couple of videos right now on YouTube, on the Greg Sipes YouTube channel where I teach you how to make my superfood salad, my Sipes superfood salad, and it just so happens, in the word recipes, my last name is in there, Sipes. <laughs> wow. So I'm doing a whole line of uh, recipes for life. Recipes, recipe, recipes, recipes, <laughs> recipes, <laughs> kale salad, the kale salad ones on YouTube right now. You and I share to make a dessert too, superfood, chocolate ninja, powerful Jedi crunch. We've so. got about five minutes left. I think we can rapid fire through a few, as many of you as we can get. Let's go, uh, I, I see, is that an Ash Ketchum with your hand up? All right, yeah, I choose you, go. My favorite part I ever did was Melody from The Little Mermaid 2. Yes. I love that movie. Aww. 
Because Ter- I got what? Can, uh, I, was, I was at Boston last week with Jody Benson, and she specifically sung your praises uh, oh, very, very yeah. particularly. What was it like working with Jody? No, no, she, I could have died the next day. I, <laughs> I totally fangirled. I started crying. She's like, are you okay? I'm like, I've loved you for so long. You can ask my cousins. They're here. My, in my childhood bedroom was the poster of The Little Mermaid since I was a baby till we just sold our house last year. Um, and I, that was such a dream come true to, to sing with her. And I had a lot of fun doing the Powerpuff Girls and Fairly Odd Parents, and I guess hanging with this guy is okay. Uh-huh. But it's all fun. It's all just so great. And I love doing Harley. Harley is like my therapy. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're like, oh, you have to do a video game and scream for four hours. Oh, really? It's Harley. Yes! I'm ready to get out some emotions right about now, yeah. Puddin'. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really pushing for a Beast Boy Harley Quinn. Don't think about it, right? Yeah. What are you talking about? Um, I don't know because you know Beast Boy's got a lot of love for all the mamas. I'm gonna kill him later. <laughs> Kylo Ren. It was really fun. Like, when we think of Go, we think more serious, more authentic moments. I'm sorry, when we think of the original. <laughs> and then Go, we think sillier. So <laughs> They change a little bit in your, in your inner attitude, but you don't think, oh, I'm going to change the voice that much, right? It just happens. Yeah. Like, literally, uh, it's another world. Like, each show that we do is like a world. Like, our third eyes contain these different dimensions. And if we pop into the original show, it's a different dimension, and all of a sudden our voices change naturally. Yeah, but like, it's really fun to argue with yourself. You should try it sometime. Yeah. Let's see, uh, Mario here. That's what's up. <laughs> well, what, what would you, Bunga, dude. Like, what kind of a party would that be? Beast Boy and Mikey I mean, we've out. done it. We did it a little bit on Teen Titans Go. They did an episode that got me in trouble. <laughs> Our writers like to get, uh, you know, be very controversial on Teen Titans Go, and they wrote an episode where the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles ninjally show up on our show. And definitely Mikey and Beast Boy had a couple moments together. It's it was cute. cute when Raven played with ponies, too. Yeah. That was kind of cute. Yeah. I like when they do that. Okay. I got a call from Nickelodeon. They're like, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I did. You did? I go, Sam Register. <gasps> That's the guy who runs Warner Brothers. <laughs> See, with the, with the sleeve there, yes. Uh, so when I got to do Batman, it was pretty exciting sitting in between Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy. Also could have died right after. Um, and my favorite episode was Girls Night Out because I just love these two kick-ass chicks running around saving the day and then putting their hair up in towels and talking about boys. Like <laughs> It was early on in you know seeing real women kicking butt together on, on an animated series. And I think it helped inspire some of the DC girls and stuff like that. So that was really fun for me. Wait, what was the second question? Oh, Harley. Favorite Harley thing to do? You know, I'm really enjoying the new DC superhero girls. Have you guys seen it? I love it so much. And I said to Lauren, first of all, thank you for not making every girl a size zero. Right? All different colors, all different body types. It's so beautiful and inclusive. And they're girls, but they also kick some serious butt. So I have a lot of fun and just that dichotomy of them not knowing that their best friend is their arch nemesis is so much fun. But I've really enjoyed every iteration of Harley. I, I just, I have so much fun doing that show. Character. <laughs> Anytime I get to do her, I'm excited. Okay, I think we've got time for one more. Who wants it the absolute no, most? No, let's just extend it for a couple more hours. What do you guys say? I'm, call- I'm, I'm, I'm powerless. I'm texting the owner of the con right now. I'm like, we just want to ex- extend our book. <laughs> you just don't want to get up and do things. Who wants it? Who wants it the most? Who wants it the most? 
Oh, I, I feel like I, it'd be terrible to not go to Beast Boy. Thank you. Style icons. Have I ever, you guys? Uh, I think you have. Right? I've done it. It was really fun. Um, the first time I did it, I dressed as Harley, and I was surprising the fans at San Diego Comic-Con, and I didn't tell people. So normally when I walk from my hotel to the con, I get stopped, but this time I didn't really because there was a million Harleys, and one guy's like, can I take your picture? Harley's like my favorite, and you're like my 12th one today. And I go, okay. But am I your favorite? And he goes, I don't know. I've seen a lot of good ones. <laughs> I was like, I just can't wait him to get home and go, wait, what? Like, let's make it a little bigger. And then there was a family, like, they were all just happened to be cosplaying as Tara Strong. Like, the daughter was Raven, the son was Ben 10, the mom was like Melody. Like, everybody was me, and they didn't know I was me as Harley. And I was with a director, and I, I went over to Raven, and I said, Do you know who I am? She's like, no, and I, <laughs> I go, Azrath, Metrion, Zinthos, and she goes, well, I know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> and so I happen to be walking the floor with a director friend. He's like, you know she voices all of you, right? She's your whole family. It's fun. You should cosplay. Well, you have. You've done Beast Boy. Yeah, uh, two years ago at Comic-Con San Diego, AMC theaters paid for me to be transformed into Beast Boy, and... It was really cool. It was a legit like Beast Boy costume. It felt good. The makeup was awesome. And we show like how you could do it as well, which I see a lot of you look better than the one I did. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what's up. But it's fun. It's, I love dressing up as Beast Boy. I mean, look, I'm almost there right now. Your uh, your Hawaiian vacation Beast Boy. That's right. So I've got, I've got a couple little things uh, to get out of the way before we wrap things up. Uh, one, just because of the orientation of this room and because we've got to get them uh, back over to their tables and everything, if you can keep your seats when we wrap up so that we can get them out and get them back over to the other side of creation, to the other building, uh, I would appreciate that. How many of you are here the rest of the weekend? Okay. You guys are here through Sunday, yeah? Oh, yeah. If you guys didn't get your question, please come see us at the tables. Um, I answer questions for free. Greg charges like $1,000 a question, something like that. $1,000 a word. <laughs> so, yeah, come see us. We'll be here all weekend. When we were filling the room, I was, telling, I was asking everybody who has gotten to see them at a convention, and most of you have not, uh, and I hope that this Q&A has, has been a testament to the fact that these are two of the most generous, kind, deeply loving guests on the convention circuit ever. Uh, I can't, I, this is no BS, kids. That stands for bad stuff. Uh, <laughs> These two, these two are so, so giving, so kind, so empathetic uh, to you fans. I, I love being on stage with them because I get to watch them give you guys uh, the, the love that I grew up. I, I, he's bringing me my fee in person. Thanks, like this. <laughs> Look, let, let's, let's get a round of applause for the crew that run this show. Give me my $20 back. Let's get a round of applause for Wingman. Let's keep it going for Tara Strong and Greg Sipes, everybody. For the Beast Boys. Oh, and I said I got a present for all the Beast Boys. Mama Tara's giving them all away. <laughs> all right, Beast Boys, I'm gonna walk by and give it to you. You can watch us awkwardly as we walk out. For, hold on, we need our, our backstage. Our moving backstage. <laughs> 